Hi and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy of Law and Economics. So in this video I'm going to talk about tort law in game theory and the use of strict liability rule. So typically when we have tort law we analyze it in game theory through different types of matrix models and what we do is we begin with analyzing the behavior of the parties or the agents or who's ever in uh, the dispute here tort law so that will be a victim and an injurer from different types of settings we typically begin with no liability rule to see okay if we do not interfere by regulation how would the players play how would they act and is this efficient in this video we're going to go in to look at a game theoretical structure and look at what will happen when we introduce strict liability into this setting and how would the cost function shift and to which extent? So strict liability would typically use this rule when well, we use it in multiple manners, but we have a lot of traffic rules that where we can see strict liability. And there are some elements that kind of like reflect on strict liability. Typically, it can be used in um, cases where the harm is really high so people die etc so by putting in a strict liability rule we know that the punishment will be quite hard and that will retain people from actually conducting any harm in that sense we reduce the risk of uh, a, a, of a case to as, as close to zero because we know that there's a strict liability rule Sometimes, though, they, we can also put it in because it can be hard to bear the burden of proof. We see that also sometimes in product liability rules and etc. And here we also use strict liability. So there are multiple cases, but let's dive into the game theoretical framework. So we have the case here. We have an injury. We have a victim because it's tort law. So both of them can have uh, two different types of behavior they can be negligent or they can be careful if they're careful that has a cost because they have to restrict themselves or they have to adapt their behavior instead of just being negligent if the injurer is careful uh, he or she will bear a cost of three if the victim is careful then he or she will bear a cost of two so there's also the injury of cost if no one's careful of course, the cost of the injury is at the highest. It will be at 15, causing a total cost of 15 because no one has a cost of care. So, but if both of them are careful, the chance or the risk uh, for the injury is will be reducted and therefore the average cost of the injury will go down to 6. But if both of them are careful, well, we also have to remember that they bear a cost of being careful. So if both are careful, uh, the injury will bear a cost of three, the victim two, the injury cost will be six, and the total cost will here be 11. Of course, this is the, uh, the lowest total cost that we could get. And from a societal view, this might be what we want to thrive for because, well, it is maximizing the total social wealth, at least in this case. So let's put it into a game theoretical matrix. We have the victim horizontally, we have the injury vertically. So when we put up the numbers here, remember it's a cost model. So even though they're positive numbers, it's cost. So the first number we put in on both sides, um, that will be the cost of care. So we can see here from the uh, the above row uh, for the victim. If the victim is negligent, he or she will bear a cost of zero. If the victim is careful, the cost will be two. On the injury side, the first number, if the injury is uh, negligent, there will be a cost of zero. You can see zero first and zero in the second line. And if the injury is careful, there will be a cost of three, as we saw in the cost model. So what is special here is that we put in the rule of strict liability. What does that mean? Well, it means that the cost of the injury goes 
to the injurer. When we had the case of no liability rule, the cost of the injury went to the victim because no one was liable. We have to remember that the rule, the liability rule reflects on the injurer. It addresses the injury, hence the rule only sets around the injurer. So when we have strict liability, that means that the injury is liable no matter what. So he or she bears the cost of uh, the injury. So therefore, the cost of the injury is now on the injurious side. So what will happen when we want to see how the players play this game? How will they act? Well, let's look into it. So here you can see, if we start with the injurer, the injurer can choose between being negligent or careful. If the injury is negligent, uh, the cost will be 15 or 12. If the injury is careful, the cost will be 13 if the victim is negligent and 9 if the victim is careful. Hence, it is better in every case to be careful. So this is strictly dominating strategy here for the injurer. Let's look at the victim. The victim could choose between being negligent or careful. By being negligent, the victim will have a cost of zero. By being careful, it will have a cost of two. Remember, because the cost of the injury is on the injurer because of the strict liability rule. So here the victim will actually choose to be negligent, leading to the Nash equilibrium of two dominating strategies of the victim being negligent and the injurer being careful, a total cost of 13. So this is not the best case scenario that we wanted to in kind of a social welfare system because we could do, go down to 11. So this rule has not made a Calder Hicks efficient um, result, but maybe another rule will, will do that. Let's look into it, but stay tuned, subscribe to this channel and let's talk much more about law and economics.